So this is our inaugural white coat ceremony. Um, I am Josette Wilkes. I'm the chemistry professor here at Livingstone College, and I will be presiding over today's event. So let us commence. So we will have invocation by Dr. Balagon, followed by the welcome by Mr. Bacha. Let's give them a hand as they come up. studies. We ask that you bless them abundantly, give them courage to complete what they have started. We ask that you bless our leaders, Dr. Don McNair and Dr. Emmanuel Williams, all the STEM faculty members, our speaker, Dr. Kwayemi Olapisi. May his speech motivate and encourage our students to proceed to higher heights. We also ask you to bless our guests, family, friends present here this evening. In your mighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you to each and everyone of you for being here with us this evening. We are very happy, we are very pleased to be able to welcome you, the faculty, staff, administrators, students, families, and, and other guests. Today marks a moment to celebrate our STEM students who have achieved success in math, science, and computer information systems. Today marks the Livingston College Year of Science and Mathematics the first annual STEM white white course ceremony. We are, proud, we are proud to be able to host it today here at this wonderful place with all of you. Thank you so much. All right. Now we will have our faculty introduction by Dr. Lee. Let's give her a hand. Thank you. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for attending this celebratory event this evening. We certainly appreciate everyone that's here this evening. At this time, I have the honor to introduce the faculty and staff of the Division of Mathematics and Science and the Department of CIS. I was going to say STEM, you may STEM term, what has been called, but most of you are STEM. And the Department of Biology, we have the chair of the department, Dr. Emmanuel Williams. Ms. Wave, you raise your hand. <laughs> Dr. Burrell. Dr. Sashi, Dr. Josette Wilkes, Dr. Miller, in the absence we have Dr. Uh, Willis as well as Dr. Wilma Gerard. In the Department of Mathematics we have our wonderful Dean, Dr. Don McNair. <laughs> we have Dr. Barter. <laughs> Myself, once again, I'm Dr. Dean. And Dr. Um, Janza, Mr. D Professor Janza, he's um, in his absence. In the Department of Computer Information System, we have Dr. Balladon. Professor Greyhart and Professor Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, so why don't we give our wonderful faculty another hand. All right, so now we are going to have the introduction of our guest speaker by Mr. Jalen Hurt. Let's give Jalen Hurt. one of our awesome young freshmen. Awesome. Yes, awesome. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I have the distinct honor of introducing the speaker of the hour. Um, he calls us from Duke University, by the way, of Albert Einstein College of Medicine. His extended biography is in program, and I would encourage everyone to look at it and appreciate all of his accomplishments. I would briefly like to highlight Dr. Holodesius is a board certified NIH supporter who serves, uh, who serves as a dynamic leader in the field of nephrology. In addition to his clinical contribution, Dr. Alvisi is active in the field of molecular physiology of the kidneys. While his accolades to linger for hours as a dynamic physician and scientist, where he chairs himself outside of the white coat, speaks about him in a great way. Dr. Alabisi is a lifelong supporter to the causes of underrepresented minorities. And STEM, for this reason, I'm honored to present our first annual STEM White Coat Ceremony speaker, Dr. Alabisi. for that wonderful introduction, much appreciated. Can everybody hear me in the back? Yes. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Opayemi Olabisi. I'm so very honored to be here. Uh, I want to especially thank uh, Dr. Williams for uh, inviting me to be here this evening. Uh, I want to thank the faculty member, the dean uh, of, the, of the institution. I want to thank the parents uh, and also uh, the student body. I'm very honored to be here today. Uh, I moved from Massachusetts to uh, Durham to Duke four months before COVID. So I haven't really had the opportunity to know the lay of the land as much. So this is my first time uh, at Livingston College and I, I expect to not be the last I will be here. So I look forward to coming back. Uh, but thank you for having me today. Uh, so I've been, Can you hear me? All right. So for our celebrants, for the people we're celebrating today in this, in this STEM program, can I please see your hands? I want to see this. Excellent. So we're mostly here. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I want to congratulate you for the journey uh, that you've made so far. In fact, you are the reason I'm so excited to be here. As I was driving here, uh, I was talking to my wife how much I'm looking forward to this event. Um, because about 24, 25 years ago, I'm precisely where you are seated today. Maybe not in the same seat, uh, but figuratively in the same position as you are. Uh, and so see me today as somebody that's from, that's sent here by your future self. Uh, so I bring you greetings from your future self <laughs> talking to you today. Because when I was in your position 24, 25 years ago, uh, I listened to people like myself uh, talking to you. The question I asked myself coming here was, if I had to advise myself, my 20-year-old self, what would I tell him? What will I say about the journey, about what lies ahead? And so in my remarks today, essentially what I would have told my 20-year-old self is what I'm telling you today. Uh, the first uh, observation or the first advice is do not stop at fear. Proceed to curiosity. 
Do not stop at fear. Pro proceed to curiosity. The natural instinct, when we are faced with a new scenario or a very unfamiliar situation, is to be fearful. If you are walking in a path, maybe in a, in a, in a bush or in a street, and you met something that you really do not expect to be there, the normal human instinct is to be afraid. That is the instinct for all of us. However, following that instinct, two possible things could happen. One is to retreat. The feeling of wanting to recoil back or to retreat, that's one possibility. The second possibility is to move forward with curiosity, to want to know. The fear instinct is something that you really cannot control. It happens to all of us. But what happens next? We always have opportunity to choose whether to retreat or to recoil, or whether to move forward with curiosity. So if I were to be talking to my 20-year-old self, I would say move forward with curiosity. Now, to put a, a little bit of context to where I'm coming from. So I was born in Nigeria, Western Nigeria, uh, in a state called Kwara State. Uh, and I moved here to the United States uh, when I was 19 years old. So my dad uh, was a nurse. Uh, he moved to the Bronx uh, to work as a nurse in a psychiatric hospital. Uh, so he worked by day at the psychiatric hospital. He worked at night at the state prison for, as a nurse. So that's how he kept the food on the table. And that's how he was able to invite us here uh, to the United States. Uh, I'm the middle of five children. Uh, and I was the first person to go to college in my family. So for some of you, that might be true for you as well. Uh, so when we moved to the Bronx, uh, I remember how excited I was when I gained admission to City College of New York, CCNY. I don't know if some of you are familiar with it. It's not an HBCU, but it functioned as such. It's been, I think it was uh, founded in 1847. It's situated right in the heart of Harlem. And so when I got there, the first thing that struck me was the reputation of the school, the stature of the school. It has all these tall gothic buildings that's like pointing all the way towards the sky. And when I read about the school, it has 10 Nobel laureates, meaning 10 Nobel Prize winners. So I, the first feeling I had was, boy, I felt out of place, both by the architectural structure of the school and by its reputation. Now, I told you, uh, in my family, I was the first to go to college, so I didn't have a lot of precedents to fall on. When you have an older brother or your father or an uncle, that you can say, well, you know, maybe if my uncle can make it, I can make it too. I remember I didn't have that. So a little, you know, in you, you, you feel a little bit of that feeling. Uh, and thirdly, I had my education, primary and secondary school education in Nigeria. I went to a public school in Nigeria. And here was I in the heart of Manhattan, within this high-rising building, looking around everybody from all over the world. I wasn't sure whether my public school education from Nigeria had prepared me for what lie ahead. I was afraid. I was afraid of failure. I wouldn't know. I didn't know whether I was going to make it. I even thought maybe I should tell my parents, maybe we should go and look for some with community colleges just to, to, to get my feet wet. But with the help of family, with the help of folks around, I decided to move forward with curiosity. Remember, you always have the opportunity to choose whether to move forward in curiosity or not. I've been interested in medicine. So I said, well, if you want to go to medicine, what do you do? So well, you'll be a pre-med student. So I joined the pre-med group. So what classes do you take? told me the classes, I started taking the classes. Then I asked the pre-med advisor, if you want to go to medical school, what do you do in addition to having good grades? I said, well, you should probably get to do some research. So I said, how do you do that? They pointed me in the direction. I followed that curiously as well. At the end of the day, before I know it, four years was up. I graduated with honors, um, gained admission to medical school, but more importantly, I became interested in research because of that exposure that I had at City College. So a boy from a corner of Western Nigeria coming to the heart of Manhattan, getting exposed to science. I did not intend to go into science. I only wanted to go to medical school. 
But in order to go to medical school, somebody told me to go to the lab and learn some stuff, and I realized I loved it. It's like a new oasis opened before me, right? So that's what happened when you followed with curiosity. It doesn't mean you have it all together, but that would be my first lesson. So when you are confronted with fear, don't stop there. Take the next step. And I will encourage you to move with curiosity. The second uh, advice I will give to myself then, and I will give to you today, is recognize and utilize your competitive advantages or assets. All of us have advantages. All of us have certain assets. We may not think of it that way. Let's, let's look for example. And if we leverage those advantages, it can actually help us towards the goal we are trying to reach. Supportive family, supportive parent, or parent uh, figures. We have family here today that are actually supportive of what you guys are trying to do. That already tells me that you already have an advantage in hand. Uh, some of you can read very fast. Now you may not even know that's an advantage already. Some of you learn to read fast. Some of you acquire that by training yourself. Ability to, to read, uh, speed reading, is actually an advantage. Ability to rise early and be productive. Not everybody can rise early and be productive. If you force some people to wake up early, they, they can drink all the coffee in this world, it will not be productive, right? But some of you, by the way you are wired, that by the way God made you, you can rise early and be productive. I should say that the advantages I'm talking of, some of it come by nature, the way you are made, some of it come by nurture, the way you are raised, and some of it come by the virtue of the environment you are in, right? But all those things, I call them advantages. Some of you can stay up late into the night, we of the night, and still be functional when other people may be asleep. That is an advantage. Some of you can retain a lot of information you can memorize. You may take this for granted, but some of you, you notice that in yourself, that you can inhale a lot of information and retain them. That's not a normal thing for most people, but that's an advantage. Some of you can look at chemical structure in 3D. I remember when I was taking organic chemistry, I cannot see it. But I remember a classmate of mine, he almost seemed to be that his mind can envision this compound and look around them. Those are advantages. And I would say those are advantages that we should leverage. I'll give you a personal example. I spoke about family and the advantages that family constitute. My dad was a nurse, but he was very, very, very smart in how to encourage. Almost all the time before my test, when I was at City College, he would remind me, he would say, the force that made the universe is on your side. The power that made the universe is on your side. You study hard as you can, but go in there. Remember, it's on your side. And you know what? Initially, I thought it was corny. But sometimes when the exam is hard, <laughs> so first, I hope, you are, <laughs> I hope you are there. Having somebody to lend you courage. That comes from family. Sometimes from sisters, sometimes from brothers, sometimes from parents. That is an advantage. Take advantage of it. Leverage it. Uh, invested teachers. I remember at City College, uh, Jerry Guiding was our biology teacher. He's always screaming, you gotta read! You gotta... And we don't want to disappoint him. Having a teacher that wants to look after your well-being, a teacher that put, position himself up there, that he doesn't want to be disappointed, having a teacher like that is an asset. Again, that's an advantage that comes from your environment. Lastly, perseverance. Some of you have the gift of perseverance, advantages of perseverance. I remember it was Albert Einstein. He says, well, God made a donkey and gave him a tick hide. And what he was referring to was himself. He said, God made, created me and made me stubborn. When other people have given up the problem, he's still sticking to it. So some of you have the gift of seeing things true. And people who do not have it are cultivating that, the ability to persevere to have grit, to stick with the problem until it's solved. Those are recognized as competitive advantage. And you might say, these things are common things. Well, maybe to you. Not everybody have these advantages that are enumerated. 
So take advantage of them, leverage them for your success. The third thing I will advise today is the value of hard work, perseverance. Uh, so hard work and perseverance can make up for insufficient talent. Let me say that again. Hard work and perseverance can make up for insufficient talent. Uh, I mentioned organic chemistry. A lot of classes when I was in City College, when I studied hard, I kind of get hold of them. But two classes, organic chemistry and statistics. Now, let me see whether I have when I have equal-minded people here. I'm, I'm sure your professors are here, but let's pretend they are not here. How many people here find statistics and organic chemistry very easy? I see somebody in the back, you see, I see somebody in the back. Don't take that for granted. I sweated bullets just to, <laughs> just to get through those classes at City College. The few B's I got, I think, was in statistics. Uh, it was hard. But I suddenly realized, though, that if I find biology and maybe some math class easy, if I need to do well in statistics, I need to study harder. I need to stretch myself. Hard work and perseverance made up for what I did not have innately. So hard work and perseverance can make up for lack of talent, and that's what I mean by that. There's an old African adage that says that if you are being chased <laughs> by a masquerade, I think Dr. Baloko here will be able to, is probably the only one that will understand this in his, in his original language, that if you are being chased by a frightful masquerade, take heart, but don't stop, because as you are getting tired, so does the master it, right? What keeps you going is perseverance. What keeps you from the reach of the masquerade? Now, some of you might say, what's a masquerade? In the African folklore, masquerades are supposed to be heavenly bodies that they don't get tired. But it's actually your cousin or uncle that is under the, <laughs> under the, under the masquerade gown. He is also human like you. He's chasing you, but if you persevere, as you are getting tired, guess what's happening to the masquerade? He's also getting tired, right? So, but the people that stick to it, the people that say, well, when every inch of my body tells me to stop, I will not. I will push it just a little harder. We see this in our athletes. Sometimes I look at the NBA players, so you see sometimes they are, they are gassed, right? But the exceptional ones somehow know how to, dip, to dig deeper and reach for that level of gear. I think in medicine, in science, in STEM, we can do the same thing. So, hard work and perseverance can make up for insufficient talent. And I tell myself all times, hard work beats talent any day of the week. I have a lab uh, at Duke, and before that at Harvard, when I'm looking to uh, invite people to my lab, I usually try to, to have a feel. Does this person, can this person work hard? Is this person able to persevere on a project? You know, the story was told about Albert Einstein. I kept going back to him because I find him very uh, instructive. When we talk about Einstein today, we all think of genius. But between the time he developed the theory of special relativity and general relativity, that's nine years. Most people will have moved on to something else, but it's stuck to it. So hard work and perseverance. Fourthly, seek people that are traveling in the same direction you wish to go. Seek people that are traveling in the same direction you wish to go. Uh, there's an old saying that most of you might be familiar with that if, if you want to travel fast, travel alone. But if you want to travel far, travel in the company of like-minded people. And some of you, I would say, in fact, most of you in this room that are in the STEM program, you are sitting around fellow travelers. You are surrounded by people who are traveling alongside you. So some of the fellow travelers you are looking for are already around you. They don't have to be many. It could be one person, it could be two people. Body up with them. You will travel farther that way. When one person is not feeling like studying, the other person says, come on, let's just stick to it. We'll do this and then we'll eat some food and you know, we'll get back to it. That's how it happens. 
you leverage the strength of uh, your, your, your traveling partner. But another place that you can easily find a traveling partner, some of them are even there, is in books. I will tell you my own personal favorite are biographies. I love biographies because I think of them as time portals. What was Martin Luther King thinking when he was in Birmingham jail? When you read his writing, you almost in time, it takes you to what he was thinking right there and then. It's amazing. So biography is a great source of inspiration. It reminds you that what you are going through now, other people have gone through before. Uh, it also gives you access to the reason why certain people are successful. I'll give you some example of some of the biography that I enjoyed reading, and I hope today, people who are listening, if you have one that you really read and you enjoyed, please uh, share them with me. I'm a sucker for biography. <clears throat> I've mentioned Einstein a couple of times by Walter Isaacson. He sort of painted the man before he became genius. It makes you see that Einstein was no Einstein before he became Einstein. I love Becoming by Michelle Obama. It was such a moving book. I actually like it more than Barack Obama's book because it's very, I gotta say that, it's quite, it, it, it gives you, it, you can reach behind the curtain and you see what the person means and it's very willing to share. Uh, that's biography from, from Michelle. Uh, Up From Slavery by Booker T. Washington. Uh, the biography of Elon Musk by Ashley Vance. I don't really care for much Elon Musk, but I like people that are stubborn, that have a goal, and they stuck to it. They pursued it with all their passion. Reading his biography will really teach us a lot about that. I enjoyed uh, Malcolm X by, my, uh, by Manning Marable. Shoe Dog uh, by Phil Knight. Born a Crime by Trevon Noor. If you haven't read it, that book is, oh, it's, it's awesome. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, again, by Walter Isaacson. And the last book I will share here today is The Warmth of Other Sons by Isabel Wilkerson. All the other books are about individuals, but this, Warmth of Other Sons, is actually the, the biography of a people, of black people, the migration from the south to the north. As somebody who came from another country to the US, I don't think any book taught me much more about the history of black experience in the United States as that book. Now, that's the beauty of biography. It's a time portal. Go through it as often as you can. And I will say this. Some people might say, I don't read as fast. You don't need to read it nowadays. You can listen to it. I was listening to audio book as I was coming here. Your brain does not hear how you get information. So if you get, a, get all those books by audio book, do that. I'm almost done. Failure is a stepping stone to success. Don't be deterred by it. Failure is a, is a stepping stone to success. Don't be deterred by it. So how many people here have failed at something? If you have, please raise your hand. Okay. So I see a lot of people that are either successful or on the way to success. <laughs> successful people, you'll find this in, 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 not just in biography, in life. In order to be successful at something, you have to be willing to tolerate some failure. In fact, when you write the equation for profit, you have to put risk in that equation. Similarly, when you write the equation for success, failure is in that equation as well. So, don't be deterred by saying, well, I failed that class, I'm not good at it. No, that's not a good way to look at it. It's a way to think of uh, success. And especially in STEM, there are classes you will take, or you will hear people saying that that class, you may not really do well in it. Don't let that deter you. It's a personal experience. So once I graduated from City College, I actually decided I want to go to, to a medical school to uh, obtain MD-PhD degree. At that time, I said, okay, medicine is lovely, but science is just enjoyable. Okay, I'll just do both, right? So I go to Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and I was loving it. First year was okay, second year was fine. I went to the lab, finished my PhD thesis, defended. I was on top of the world. Things were going swimmingly. 
came back to my clinical training. Now, the way the medical school is structured, you do practical and you also do written tests. The exam was in psychiatry, and I actually was thinking I was going to go into psychiatry. I took the exam. To my shock, I failed it, and I failed it badly. I remember in my apartment, I was crying. And I wasn't crying because, well, also because I failed. It was like the first exam I really have failed. But I also was afraid. I said, gosh, what will happen if I can pass this exam on repeat? It's almost as though you have always been able to dunk in the basket. And one day, you are playing, you went to the basket, you didn't even get to the rim. <laughs> And you are thinking, what if I go back to it and I can't even make it to the basket again? I was afraid. Right? But I had to seek help. I said, what, what is happening? It turns out, as a PhD student, the way you study is different than you watch the way you study for your clinical exams. So I have to relearn. I have to relearn the way to study. And it was humbling. I remember going to the advisor shop and saying, well, you need help. And in my heart, I was like, man, that's not me. But at that moment, I said, you have to relearn really how to study. So learning to study as a medical student and a clinical medical student actually became very helpful for me. I learned that at that point, and it carried forward. When I look back at that failure, it was a stepping stone for what came after. Right? Mentorship is necessary, and this is my last point. Uh, we could say a whole lot more, but I have to condense it to, to a few points. Mentorship is necessary. So when I left, I uh, eventually graduated uh, very well from, from uh, Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and at that time I was so sure I was going to go into cardiology. I was young and foolish before I found a kidney. <laughs> Sorry for the cardiologist that might be here. Uh, so I went to Boston. Uh, I was able to gain ad, uh, acceptance to Harvard uh, at, the, at the Massachusetts General Hospital. Uh, and I remember they feeling great until we started residency. Have you ever felt sometimes when you are punching, they, they say you are punching above your weight? That's how it, I remember as a young intern at Mass General. Uh, you know, they sometimes a man's greater hospital, whatever they call it, then I felt intimidated again. It's the experience I had at City College all over again at Harvard. And I was thinking, man, maybe I should have stayed in New York. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have come here. Because I realized there are things I needed to learn. There are things I needed to know. There are steps, there are almost things that I, some of my colleagues have already learned to do that I haven't learned. So at that point, I had to seek help to say, okay, what do I need to do? How do I catch up? And that's where mentorship comes in. So mentorship comes from your colleagues, but a lot of it comes from people who are around. Right? My mentorship started both from City College, where I had a lot of people that guide my step, to when I was at Einstein, where my PhD mentor was from Hong Kong, my MD PhD mentor, uh, my Akabas. Uh, was Jewish, I went to Harvard, was an African-American mentor, but as I went through, somebody was there to help me, to inspire me, to guide me, and not infrequently, to open some doors. You cannot do it by yourself. Anywhere, but especially in our environment, people that pave the door, that crack the door open for you, I say, well, now you can go through. You go through on your own, but we'll make sure the door is open. Those are mentors. Those are catalysts. Those are champions. Wherever you are, and I'm sure you have that in this institution. When you have that, latch on to that person. They help you to move forward. So lastly, I said, how do we finish this? So currently, I'm at uh, Duke. So I do kidney disease research. And this is, this is the passion uh, that drives what I do. Uh, in the United States, black people are four times four times more likely to end up on, on dialysis. For example, in the US, we know that black will represent about 13% of US population. On dialysis, we represent about 35% of patients on dialysis. 13% of US population, 35% on dialysis. So I wanted to do my own part 
What can I do with my science? So the research I do is focused on that. Now, what enabled me to do that is STEM, the lesson I've learned at City College, at Einstein, and at Harvard, which is in basic science, translating to clinical uh, medicine as well. So you are living in a very impressive time in history where knowledge is exploding. We can now sequence not just the whole human genome, but even single cell. So you are in a very opportune position. I want to encourage you, you know, seize the day. Uh, and the future is very bright. You'll be able to do a lot of things. You'll be able to ask a lot of questions. You'll be able to touch the community that, that you are interested in through your science. And I will say, stay the course. And uh, your future self told me, to tell, told me to tell you that stay the course, don't be discouraged, and uh, stay motivated. Thank you for listening. Compass comes in many different forms. Uh, your own conscious, the opportunities that come your way, and the Lord. Part of this is going to be the idea that you have certain responsibilities. And that's what the oath spells out. It spells out the responsibilities that you have for your community, for each other, your colleagues. And for yourself. What I would like you to do is stand, raise a hand, and repeat after me. Stand By accepting my white coat. By accepting my white coat. I earnestly assert that I will apply. I earnestly assert that I will apply my scientific skills, my scientific skills, and principles to benefit society. And principles to benefit society. I will continue to practice and support. 
I will continue to practice and support the scientific process that is based on the scientific process that is based on logic, logic, intellectual rigor, intellectual rigor, personal integrity, personal integrity, and an uncompromising respect for truth. And an uncompromising respect for truth. I will treat my colleagues' work. I will treat my colleagues' work with respect and objectivity. With respect and objectivity. I will convey these scientific principles. I will convey these scientific principles in my chosen profession. In my chosen profession. In mentoring. In mentoring. And in public debate. And in public debate. I will seek to increase public understanding. I will seek to increase public understanding of the principles of science, of the principles of science and its humanitarian goals. And its humanitarian goals. These things I do promise. These things I do promise. Thank you. Celebrants, please stand. And what I'm going to ask is that as we come, uh, we do understand that we do have family, friends, and colleagues who are going to take part in celebration. If you would, as your celebrant is recognized, would you also stand to be recognized co jointly? Is that okay? Would all of our candidates please stand? It is my honor to begin our, our vestiture today with Ms. Tyresha Blackman, who is a senior Miss Livingstone, Miss Asia Bowie from from Jacksonville, Florida, Ms. Deanna Brown. currently here today, but for the record, this is being recorded. I do want it to be mentioned in the records that Mr. Cameron Carpenter is also a recipient of the White Coat. <laughs> the distinguished Miss Soraya dampier Salmon.
Also in absentia, not present with us here today, but still for the record, my frat brother, Mr. Jawan Evans. <laughs> Mr. Jura Hansley. From Jacksonville, Florida, Miss Kiara Humber. From Memphis, Tennessee, my brother from another mother, Mr. Jalen Murray. Miss Michaela Jones. She will be continuing on to Campbell School of Pharmacy in the fall of 2022, Ms. Shatia Jones. From Brooklyn, New York, Mr. Matthew Kelly. From Brandon, Mississippi, Mr. Chance Landers.
A number of our students are also student athletes, and so the women have a, a basketball going on at the same time. I do want to recognize in absentia Miss Destiny Marcus. From Houston, Texas, Miss Alion McMillan. From Albany, New York, the lovely Miss Brianna Mickens. Absentia, one of our CIS majors, Mr. Leonard Mills III. I'm sorry, I am sorry, Mr. Leonard Mills III. <laughs> From Charlotte, North Carolina, Miss DeAsia Monroe. From Washington, D.C., Miss Kansas Mondale. From Atlanta, Georgia, Ms. Taryn O'Neill. One of the young ladies who does research in my lab in absentia, she is also competing in the women's basketball game, Miss Victoria Onazi. From Savannah, Tennessee, Miss Madeline Payne.
In absentia, Mr. Julian Perkinson. From Matthews, North Carolina, Ms. Janae Rosen. From Somerville, North Carolina, Miss Christina Simmons. A senior from Mount Airy, North Carolina, Mrs. Shira Smith. From Raleigh, North Carolina, Ms. Deja Wilkins. A senior from South Boston, Virginia, my cousin, Mrs. Shield Wick. <laughs> Lastly, near and dear to my heart, Mr. Clarence Yule. Well, I want to say before we begin to process to the bear, I am overwhelmed. This is our first white coat ceremony, and I am extremely proud of these students. Um, they set out on a path that they weren't sure about, but we are their family, 
and we will be there to support them in everything that they do. We love you and we're sending you out to do great things because we know what you have the potential to accomplish. So thank you again for your support. We're not done yet, but I just wanted to say thank you to the parents for, and the family for letting them be with us during this time in their lives. All right, let's give our sagacious and fearless leader. <laughs> Um, Dr. Donna Mayor, she's the Dean of Science and Math, but she's also the Vice President of Research here at Linda Stone. So give her another round of applause. And let's also give our beautiful, I'm about to tear up, but y'all be so good. Give them a, a hand. But now we would like to give all the parents and everyone that came to support the students, we would like to recognize you. So I know, you know, you just stood up. But could you stand again so we can recognize and honor you? So we would like to have um, closing remarks from our awesome uh, Chair of the Biology Department, Dr. Emmanuel Williams. Please give him a hand. So I am going to call our distinguished speaker, uh, Dr. Alabasi, back up. We do want to kind of recognize you uh, for taking your time and driving all the way from Raleigh just to speak words of encouragement to our students. I speak on behalf of our illustrious dean, the STEM faculty, the students, and also the family, it is much appreciated. And these words will be used for our students to galvanize them to be global partners in the, in the, in the STEM force going forward. So I want, to I want to extend this small token of hospitality to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Allen. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Okay. So the reason why I had uh, all of these students, as you all know, are near and dear to, to me. Uh, you know, I personally give them my cell phone number. You can call me 24-7. But the reason why, where's Clarence Ewell? The reason, come on, back. The reason why I asked him to remain standing is because he is our lone uh, graduating senior in the, uh, the biology department. And I think the world of and it is my prayer, this is my first year here at Livingstone, and as I look around, I look at the David Bradfords and the, 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 the Adrians and, and the Jalens, that as we embark on this STEM initiative here at Livingstone, this new STEM initiative, that we can also not only see more underrepresented populations as a whole, but we need to see our young men. There's a place for young black men in the future. Again, I thank the world of all of you all. You all look pretty nice. I am going to ask you that when we get to the bar that you would kind of remain for a, a nice little photo. I'm going to blast this out on Facebook <laughs> as the best STEM students on this side of heaven. I'm going to ask, uh, Dr. Burrell is going to distribute. So students, the instructions are you will file out in the same order that you marched in it alphabetically. You will receive a candle from uh, Drs. Burrell and Professor Boucher, and Clarence Short, our long graduating senior in biology, will lead our processional. Is that okay? If you all so care, would you join us in prayer at the bear? <laughs>
for this day. We thank you for this wonderful occasion, our inaugural white coat ceremony. Father God, we ask for a special blessing for those who planned this event and also for all of our guests, Father God. Now we ask for a special, special blessing for these students who receive their white coats on today. Father God, we pray, we ask that your favor cover them like a shield, Lord. We pray that they get the dream job. They get accepted into uh, professional schools. They get accepted to graduate schools. They get the scholarships. And they not only get the scholarships, they not only get into professional schools or um, graduate schools, but they finish, Lord. Because these are they that will turn the world upside down. So we declare that no weapon formed against these young people shall prosper. We declare that they are the head and not the tail. We declare that they are more than conquerors. Lord, we thank you right now for their lives. Father God, we thank you in advance for all that you've done and all that you will do. In Jesus' precious name, I do pray. Let us all say amen. amen. Hey, students, can you get around the, uh, the front of the bar for a nice little photo, if you don't mind?